Unless your law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. Verse 92. Notice that God's word is forever settled. It'll never change. What it says today, it'll say 100 years from now. <clears throat> You're not going to get God to change his mind to agree with you. You've got to change your mind to agree with him. Now that's called renewing the mind. Right? And so you have to go in and find out what he said. And as we said in the beginning, <clears throat> you can't uh, set, you know, you, we can't judge scripture by our experiences. But that's where most of our wrong doctrine comes from. Somebody prayed for somebody, they didn't get results, so it must not be God's will. Okay, let me show you the error of that. <clears throat> if, remember whenever the man brought his son to, to Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't cast, him, cast out the devil. Then immediately, Jesus said, what's, what, what's going on with you? And the man said, you know, my son's this. And Jesus said, how long do I have to put up with you? And he said, bring him to me. And so when he, when he came to him, he cast the devil out. <clears throat> the disciples couldn't, but Jesus did. Now, if that happened today, generally speaking, you have a group of quote-unquote disciples. They're trying to cast out a devil. It doesn't get cast out. And then some preacher, somebody walks up and says, what's going on over there? Then the people say, well, uh, we tried to cast the devil out, but it didn't come out, so it must not be God's will. See, that's the automatic thing people go to. We tried it. It didn't work. must not be God's will. Well, we know that's not true because Jesus did cast it out. So it was God's will to boy be delivered. So the failure of the disciples does not dictate the will of God. So that's what we have to remember. Your failure doesn't mean that person has extra sin, that a person has unbelief. It doesn't mean anything except you couldn't get it done. But see, we never want to point the finger back at ourselves. We want to put the blame on somebody else. That was one of the first things and probably the hardest thing <clears throat> that I had to learn was that I became responsible. Whenever, as we would say, and now I don't, you know, play to be a doctor by any stretch or a medical professional or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but we do use terminology sometimes, for instance, now, I would never call somebody a patient or anything like that, but I have said, uh, if you bring your case to me and I take your case, now it's on me to get it done, so you just relax and don't worry about faith, no faith, or whatever, don't worry about that. It's on me. I have accepted your case, right? And so that was one of the hardest things I had to learn was to actually accept that responsibility because otherwise you end up throwing it back on the person if you don't get results. But when you take responsibility, now everything changes. Because now it's like, okay, i got to get this. And there have been many, many times when I have gone to people's homes, prayed for people, uh, <clears throat> prayed for people over the telephone, different ways, and then I'm by myself, riding in my car, whatever, leaving that place, and I will go to God and say, no, God, we got to get this one. This one has to be done. I, I, I don't mean maybe someday down the road. This has got to be done now. If we don't get it done now, this person's going to die. So we got to get it done now. And I'll spend sometimes 30, 45 minutes, whatever it is, whatever I need to do, just praying in tongues. But a lot of times what I'm doing is I am preparing myself to pray in faith. Right? If it, because every situation, even though it is the same, it's not the same. See, to God, it's all the same. God could care less if it's a hangnail or, you know, cancer. It, it, none of that means anything to him because it's all, for him, it's all easy to beat. The, the difficulty comes in in our mind. Where are we at, right? And if I, now there's times you can, uh, that, I, that I will know, okay, this right here, oh yeah, I've seen this healed a thousand times before, so watch this, bam, hit it, it's gone, right? Other times you haven't seen it before or, or you've seen something or maybe you've seen something that you haven't seen that great a success with. And then when that, when that happens, you will have in the back of your mind the enemy speaking and going, well, yeah, it didn't have success with the last one. Well, it makes you, so you're probably not going to have success. And the enemy will work on you trying to get you to doubt. So, but instead of just praying right then, that's whenever you need to prepare to pray in faith. So then you go back and go, wait, wait, wait. No, listen, here's what I saw. Now, uh, I saw God heal the person with the migraine, and he healed them like that. And I saw the, God heal the person that had the, the uh, you know, chronic asthma, and it was no problem whatsoever. So uh, God was with me with the migraine. He was with me with the chronic asthma. So he's going to be with me with this cancer. Amen. Right? That's the David principle. See? God was with me with a bear. He was with me with a lion. He'll be with me with this Goliath. Amen? <clears throat> Amen? And you have to be able to uh, connect your current problem with past victories. When you connect your current problem with past victories, 
you have another victory ahead, right? And so and many times I'll pray for a person there. I will do the quote-unquote legal part of it and get it started. But then a lot of times when I finish, I'll say, okay, I'm, okay as far as I'm concerned, it's done right then. But then I'm going to leave that situation, and when I drive or whatever I'm doing, if I feel that I need to hit it again, I'll hit it again. And I'll go in, and I'll talk to God. I'll say, no, this has got to be done. And I'll argue with myself sometimes. There's been times when I, had to, I was in a situation where somebody was there, and I had to take a walk because I couldn't get myself stirred up. The Bible doesn't say to pray cold prayers. It says pray fervent prayers. And the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Not ice cold wish prayers. Right? And so if you can't pray fervent with force, with aggression, then you need to not pray right then necessarily. You need to go get stirred up and then come back and hit that thing full force. Amen. This is why a lot of prayers don't get answered. Right? And now the Bible says if we know that we pray and He hears us, and we know He hears us, we know we also have whatever we ask. Right? So that's pretty simple. So the real key is making sure we know He hears us. So sometimes, if, now understand, because if He doesn't, if you don't get the answer, it's because he didn't hear you. And if he didn't hear you, it's because you prayed in doubt and unbelief. Right? Because when he hears you, he hears faith. And whenever he hears faith, you get the answer. Amen? Amen. 